Hi, welcome everyone to the Felix Instruments F751 Mango Quality Meter webinar. Before we begin, I would like to introduce Susie Truitt, our web webinar moderator. Susie is the distributor manager at Felix Instruments and CID Bioscience. She has been with the company for eight years. I'd like to also uh, talk about housekeeping. For all questions, please use the Q&A function in Zoom. It's highlighted in green. And please refrain from using the chat function highlighted in orange unless you're experiencing technical difficulties such as lack of sound or video. Susie will be posting all relevant links and any extra information needed in the chat box. I'd like to introduce myself, Eric Munoz Garcia. I'll be your webinar presenter. I am the application scientist here at Felix Instruments and CID Bioscience. I have a Bachelor of Science in Biohealth Sciences from Oregon State University, and I have experience as a chemist and DNA analyst in the dietary supplement and natural products industry. I have experience in identity testing, product specifications, and product compliance. Most recently, I worked as a food analyst, and I have experience in food fraud and shelf studies. On our agenda today, we will start with an overview and introduction then we'll, we will move on to application and specs. And then towards the end, we will do a live demo and we will conclude this webinar with a Q&A se session. A little bit about our company. We were founded six years ago, where, but we have applied six, 30 years of food and plant experience um, and research instrumentation to create tools for the agriculture industry. We create non-destructive measurement tools that commercial agriculture producers, that produce a more consistent, higher quality product. Our instruments are known for their ability to instantly and accurately collect data for their durability, portability, and for data transparency. All of our product is engineered and tested and manufactured under our headquarters here in Camas, Washington in the United States. The overview for the F751, it is well documented the Dry matter and bricks are key parameters for determining mango quality. Current practices for determining dry matter and bricks and mangoes involve costly, time-consuming, and destructive laboratory techniques. As, link, as mango demand continues to grow, there is a definite need for a means to rapidly and non-destructively assess mango quality. The solution that we found is the F751 quality mango meter. Some key applications for the F751 mango quality meter are harvest, post-harvest, quality assurance, and research and breeding. Optimization of crop and management, crop management and harvest timing for fresh produce growers, quality management and cold storage and ripening rooms for post-harvest, and under quality assurance, the F751 can help and import quality assessment, packer distributor quality assessment, and retail outlet inspection. For research and breeding, our F751 has been and continues to be used in universities and government agent and regulator, regu regulatory agencies such as the USDA.
I'd like to go over some use cases. The first one, first of which would be crop management. The F751 quality, mango quality meter is an ideal tool for making harvest decisions without having to invest much time in, and manpower as current practices dictate. The current practice as it stands now is illustrated below. The initial step begins with determining sampling plan to obtain accurate assessment of maturity while minimizing losses. It continues into the field where workers pick fruit, mark the location and bring fruit back to the packing house or laboratory to run tests. In the lab, laboratory technicians run destructive tests, compile the data and map the results. Next is harvest tracking. The data collected is used to identify progress or problems ahead of harvest and to estimate optimal harvest time. This process is repeated every few days for several months prior to harvest. And this concludes the current practice. The new practice using the F751 mango quality meter begins with harvest tracking. Field workers visit the orchards, take measurements using the F751 mango and upload the data to fruit maps, which we'll, we, we will talk about uh, later. Th this process is repeated every few days for several months prior to harvest, making it a much shorter process than the current process being used now. Use case number two, inbound lot, lot inspection. The F751 mango quality meter allows you to analyze the quality of your fruit before it leaves the truck and enters your facility. This eliminates costly and time consuming scenarios with low quality fruit. Again, the current practice is lengthy. It begins with incoming fruit. A truck full of fruit arrives at packing house distribution center or importer exporter. Upon fruit arrival, trucks unload fruit, which is then put into a hold or quarantine to await further analysis. The analysis occurs in the laboratory where they perform destructive analysis on predetermined sample size determined based on lot size. Quality determination uh, data from QA lab is compiled and decisions on fruit quality are made. If all fruit fails, the grower returns to pick up substandard fruit. This process is repeated for each lot of fruit that comes into the packing house. The new practice that we propose with the F751 mango would be quality determination Trucks arrive with the fruit. Before it is unloaded, a sample of fruit is measured non-destructively with the F751 mango. If it fails, the truck is never unloaded, saving valuable time. Then this is rinse and repeated for each lot of fruit that comes into the packing house. Use case three, plant breeding. Many plant breeders are already utilizing the F750 for making breeding decisions and determining success of breeding programs for various commodities. The mango is one such commodity being used. Who is using it? Dr. Kerry Walsh of Central Queensland University is using it. And Dr. Jorge Osuna Garcia is also from IMIFAP. IMIFAP is also using it. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to you, our guest speaker, Dr. Kerry Walsh of Central Queensland University. And he will be speaking about his experience using the F751 quality meter.
Okay, well, good, good evening or good afternoon in my case. Um, I'll just pick up from there. Am I being heard okay, Eric? Eric, is my audio okay? Yes, okay, all good. All right, well, I'd like just to talk through some of um, the application of the technology in Australia, in the Australian uh, mango industry in particular. Uh, if I can move on to the next slide, if possible. Yes. Can we move on to the next slide, Eric? So, um, the next slide is just showing a picture of um, mango flesh at um, hard green stage, at ripening stage, and uh, at fully ripe stage. So this is stained up with, with uh, iodine. You can see it at, obviously at hard green uh, on the left hand side there, heavy iodine staining. is just to say that there's, there's obviously a lot of starch in a mango at harvest time. Uh, that starch will convert to sugar during the ripening process. By the time you get to eating ripe, uh, that's the middle uh, section, there's still a, a tiny bit of starch present. You know, you, you're eating it when there's just a you know, little bit of organic acids and, and a little bit of starch. If you fully ripen it until it's fully soft, uh, that's the right-hand panels, uh, that all the starch is gone. So the point to be made there is that the taste panel work has demonstrated well and truly that the, the bricks or the soluble sugar content is a major determinant of taste. Um, but the ripe fruit SSC is well correlated to the starch and sugar content at harvest. So at, at harvest time, all of that starch is going to convert to, to sugar later. So 15% dry matter fruit is going to become a, a 14 bricks fruit general. Uh, so that starch and sugar content is in turn correlated to dry matter content. So the, the point being that we can use the uh, F750, F751 to measure dry matter of fruit on the tree. Uh, and that will give us an index of the future eating quality. That is the future bricks of the fruit when, it, when it's ripened. Uh, so in the Australian industry, the, the Australian Mango Industry Association ha has organized these taste trials and for each com, uh, cultivar, there are uh, dry matter um, uh, specifications. So 15% dry matter is the target to get a acceptable eating quality for our Kensington Pride, our Calypso, uh, slightly different specification on our R2E2 fruit and so on. Uh, so that gives a, a target point, uh, which can be used to ensure that the, the fruit will have an acceptable eating quality. So before it leaves the farm, there's a specification to, to be achieved. Uh, there is also checking done at the distribution center. So the F750, 751 can be used uh, in the distribution center to check. And the Australian Mango Industry Association actually publishes that information. So by grower name uh, and consignment, the, the, uh, the result is, is published in a newsletter. It is a kind of name and shame kind of exercise to encourage people to to up their game in terms of the dry matter content. And then finally, the retailers uh, will also uh, utilize the technology to, to check. This slide is just to illustrate, we have also worked in terms of implementation online. We work with a company, Mafroda or Mafosiana, uh, and we can check for dry matter content of the fruit online. The, the problem being is it's too late, but by the time you've harvested it, you've got, you've You've destroyed your options. So by using the handheld unit in the field, uh, you have a management option left to you. You, know, you can leave the fruit on the tree longer, you can change agronomic conditions, uh, water um, applications, etc., to, to modify the dry matter of the fruit. Uh, so the preference in the Australian industry is the handheld uh, instrument rather than the inline instrument. Stepping on to the next slide, uh, that was just uh, backing up that statement. This is the Australian Mango Industry Association uh, having set those specifications and they have independent assessors in the marketplace using the, the meters to check 
uh, average dry matter cons in randomly uh, selected consignments. So this is just a little snip coming out of their newsletter where they're publishing the name of the grower and the, the dry matter content as a way of um, making people up their game in terms of not harvesting uh, too early. Yes, moving on. Now, to utilize this in the field, the large farms have many blocks. So yeah, this farm in particular has 50 blocks of a thousand trees each. And it's just a management exercise in trying to judge which block to harvest first. You know, if you're a small family farm and you've got 4,000 trees, four blocks of a thousand trees, you, you can keep that information in your head. But for the larger growers, it, it is a management difficulty. So that they will do their heat suns, they will you know, assess the flowering date, they will keep track of temperatures, they'll have heat suns, but to fine tune it, uh, you'll go in, and this is fruit maps, um, the F750 in this case has been used to take readings of fruit on the tree. You can see that this grower has used a, a sort of cross um, sampling pattern in each block. Um, the, the results are turning up, you know, blue above the specification level that was set. You can see on the left-hand panel, the specification was set at 16% in this case. So anything blue is above specification, yellow is just on specification, red is below. So the average for the whole block is then shown up um, and in the farm table, they'll, they'll get a recommendation on which blocks to, to harvest first. Uh, so that, that's a, a, a useful management uh, aid for them. The protocols, um, sorry, just to add there, so we, we have the AMIA set specification on eating quality. Separate to that, what is the dry matter associated with maturity? Obviously, you want the, the dry matter associated with maturity to be above the eating quality specification. If the fruit is mature with a dry matter lower than that, you're in trouble. Um, but it, it's generally not, and it's generally well higher than the, uh, the eating quality specification. That has to be learnt by the particular grower. For your growing conditions, for your photosynthetic conditions, you know, it might be a 17% dry matter, it might be a 19%, whatever it is. So you know, you'll cut fruit, you'll see what the flesh colour is, and you'll learn what dry matter is associated with uh, harvest maturity uh, in your growing conditions. All right, so how has it um, uh, been being used. Um, so in application, a uh, couple of things that we do regularly is uh, just check the instrument function. Just use the little white check cell to make sure that there's no problems with the instrument, that is that the, the referencing is working and so forth. Um, here is the, yeah, uh, here's little problems that come up particularly with users that don't power off before removing the SD card. So that's just a, a, it's a logistic thing that people need to get into the habit of. Um, we've had some problems with the battery sizes not being consistent size. You, you can get that battery in a couple of different sizes. So just making sure that's working. But the big thing, of course, is calibration. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, the model in use in, in Australia is now based on four years worth of data. There's over 12,000 reference analyses associated with that. Um, the, the season starts and the season is just starting now for the, for the Australian mango season. All instruments in the country are gathered together uh, across the industry. It's a voluntary system, but people, if they wish, will send their instruments in and there is a calibration quality control check done and if needed, the, mo the model will be updated. Uh, now that that model has been developed across several years, it's quite stable. Um, last year, for example, uh, the model SEP was good in all 15 check exercises that were done across the season. Bias was high on two occasions. So, so the benchmark that the industry aims for is an RMS here of less than 0.8% dry matter, a bias of about 0.8% um, or less. Jumping to the next slide. Uh, this is the model developed over three years and just applied on all of those check populations that were run last season. That is the 201819 season. Uh, the different colors refer to different varieties. So th this is a model developed across varieties, except for keep variety, but all other varieties. Um, it's across fruit temperatures and uh, across instruments. 
so there is a little bit of a, a bias. You can see that the pink symbols, for example, a bit lower than the, the black symbol. So one variety is slightly under predicting relative to the other. You could have models for each specific cultivar, uh, but that would entail a lot more work in terms of maintaining separate um, models. So for our industry, we, we have run with a global model uh, across that range of, of cultivars. Yes, and jumping on, uh, so that's just summarizing that again, we, we are running one model across all units based on a master model updated with Spectra from the, the slave units. Uh, we do include fruit at different temperatures with a ratio of about 500 to one of, of fruit at um, a single temperature to versus different temperatures. So the models are robust regardless of the, um, the fruit temperature. And our cross cultivar global model runs across our Kensington Pride, Honey Gold, Calypso, R2E2 and National Breeding Program fruit, but not uh, keep. Uh, and we could have slightly more accurate if we did have cultivar specific models, but we, we accept the compromise. And finally, last slide, um, no, second last slide. Uh, we are um, happy with the, the performance. It, it's good enough for the, the purpose that is you know, judging when to harvest, uh, basically, and having that quality control at the receivable centers. We do get some bias shifts between populations. I put that down to, you know, this is an optical method and light has to get in through the skin. We're measuring the flesh, has to get that out through the skin. So I think in some varieties or some growing conditions, something happens with the skin. The skin is thicker or whatever. So that, that's my explanation for what's happening when sometimes we see a, a bias shift. Um, yeah, and last slide is just to say where we're up to, um, up to next. Um, the models currently implemented are partially squares models. We've been playing around with artificial neural networks and we're getting a slightly better result with that. Uh, so that is something we would confirm in this coming season and then implement uh, into use uh, in the, the uh, F750, 751. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie, for Dr. Carrie Walsh, everyone. Um, moving on. Um, a theory of operation for the F-751. Uh, Carrie briefly mentioned, went over this, but the 751 mango sends light particles into the mango and measures the light interactance with molecules in the near infrared spectrum. The spectrum be obtained from the sample measurement is referenced against the built-in model and the resulting dry matter value is displayed on the screen. Now I'd like to talk about fruit maps. Every 751 comes fully equipped to work with fruit maps, the free interactive harvest map application. You can create custom plots, wirelessly upload measurements directly from your instrument, track weather data, and monitor your harvest from anywhere in the world. The F-751 Mango features uh, are included here on the slide. GPS enabled, it has Wi-Fi capabilities, it's user friendly, and it's most importantly, it's field ready. The F-751 Mango specifications uh, are below. Measurement it measures dry matter and bricks non-destructively. The spectral range for the spectrometer is 640 to 1050 nanometers. Data recorded, raw data, reflectance, absorbance, first derivative, second derivative, GPS coordinates, date and time. The battery life for the F751 is approximately 500 measurements. Body, heavy duty powdered coated aluminum body. 
The weight is 1.05 kilograms. The model is based off of Altolfo, Tommy K, Kent, Calypso, Keat, and Honey Gold. And for more in-depth specifications, you can visit the F751 avocado uh, mango product page on our website. And now I'd like to do a live demonstration of the F751. So I'll start by turning, powering on the instrument, pressing the green button. Takes about five seconds to boot up. And then here we are at the ready screen. Next, you want to collect your sample. This can be scanned right off of the tree, or if it's already picked as such, such as this one, then just lay it on the on the lens. You want to measure on the dorsal side of the mango, which is opposite side of the, the stem. This has the lowest dry matter reading. So if this doesn't meet specification, then that means the ripe or the fruit is not mature. Next, you want to hit the measurement button. And just like that, you get your dry matter reading. You can organize these measurements by pushing the right button. You can, it'll save to a recently used lot. You can select lots from your list or you can enter a new one. You can also delete the measurement. If you push left, it'll take you back to the dry matter and bricks reading. Up top on the screen, it'll give you the organizational tree. From this one is in plot one, plant one, and fruit one. If you push left again, It'll tell you the statistics on this particular fruit. There are six records on for the fruit one. It'll give you an average dry matter reading and a standard deviation. And just like that, in under 12 seconds, you have a dry matter and bricks reading. In summary, dry matter results in seconds are easy to use portable NIR instrument provides important quality data for assessing mango maturity and quality in a fraction of the time the classical laboratory analysis requires. The tools to keep your track of your harvest with GPS tracking and Wi-Fi capabilities, you can upload your data to fruit maps and in real time to have total visibility and control of your harvest from anywhere in the world. You'll have a wide range of applications. Uses beyond harvest management include post-harvest quality, post-harvest quality assurance, import and retail outlet assessment, and academic and government regulatory research.
support and collaboration. Satisfied users means higher quality fruit in the market. Coming soon is a F751 Kiwi quality meter. You can also get connected with us and follow us on social media or visit our website to stay updated on development projects and additional and additions to our product line. You can email us at sales at felixinstruments.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Felix Instruments. Our Facebook page is at Felix Instruments or INST and our LinkedIn.com company, Felix Instruments, Felix hyphen instruments, three hyphens applied food science forward slash backslash. Next we'll conduct our live Q and A portion of the event. Ruben is asking, is the technology amenable to other commodities like roots and tuber crops? As of today, we do not have, we have not tested it for roots and tuber crops, um, but it is something that we will look into. Some other commodities that we're working on are apples, cherries, pears, Oh yeah, and uh, the 751 cannot, is a single commodity instrument. So we do not have a 751 for roots and tuber crops, but using our F750 produce quality meter, um, you will be able to test it yourself and see if it, and try to create a model or you know, it is something that we also are willing to try. No. Uh, answer. Answer. Uh, Carrie Walsh actually says that he has applied the F750 to sweet potato for dry matter. So there is um, some studies being on based on roots at this time. Uh, Ruben asked, what kind of cost and logistical support would one require to adopt the technology? Um, Susie is gonna post in the chat box the link to our website in order to request a quote. Uh, question three by Ruben. NIRs have been calibrated to measure other traits like beta carotene, glucose, iron, and calcium content. Is it possible with this meter? Again, the F751 comes pre-calibrated and it is based on a model for a, a single commodity. So in this case, the 751 mango meter is not uh, calibrated or there's not a model for beta carotene or the other uh, traits that you're requesting. But with the SM51, uh, it is, I think it will be possible, uh, des definitely for calcium, it has been tested in samples such as milk, and I'm not sure, I can't remember the other ones, but I, we can also post a link to that in the chat box for a list of traits tested, as well as commodities, different commodities. Uh, Ruben is asking, how many samples can be processed per hour? Looking for thorough 
Oh, throughput. Um, how many samples? Okay, so one sample takes approximately 12 seconds to, to get data. So I don't know, off the top of my head, you would just divide that or multiply that by 60 by uh, five and then by 60. So one times five, five, and then, <laughs> I don't know my, the math off, off the top of my head, but yeah. Umesh is asking, what is the difference between F750 meter and mango meter? The mango meter is a single commodity instrument. So it comes pre-calibrated, uh, ready to use right out of the box based on the model provided, which is for dry matter and bricks. The F750 is, our protos quality meter is um, much more flexible, but it doesn't have, it's not pre-calibrated or it, the model is not, there aren't any models included. You can download the models off of our website and we'll include a link at, in the chat box where you can find those. But in order to, those are just starter models. You will have to have the necessary uh, tools in order to tailor the models to your instrument. This also allows you to create your own models and it comes with our free software model builder where you can create models for multiple of commodities including a mango uh, model. Patrick's asking, do you have to have a separate instrument for each product? Um, no, you don't actually. For the F7, the 751 is a single commodity instrument, but it is a very user-friendly instrument. So it comes to you as a single commodity. Um, so that instrument is used just for that commodity. It comes calibrated and ready to use out of the box, but our F750 produce quality meter, uh, you can use any model and you can actually build your own model and we have a list of uh, commodities that we have tested and even some that where we have validated data for and you can find that in the chat box below uh, anonymous attendee is asking is this meter used for Kessington Pride Mango Variety. Um, I'm gonna ask Carrie to answer or Brian. We do have the, at the end of the. Uh, yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Um, yes, the, the model that I refer to across uh, varieties includes Kensington Pride, so yes, it is in that. Uh, or we can pull the Kensington Pride out uh, that we used in that model to make a, a cultivar-specific um, model. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. Uh, I hope that answers um, that use, the user's question. Uh, Carlos is asking, is it applicable in other fruits? The F750 produce quality meter is. It can, we have a link in the chat where to the other commodities that can be used. Uh, for the F751 mango quality meter, it can't be, it's only tailored to uh, mangoes. Lauren Smith, Carrie, can we get a mango model specifically for R2E2 loaded onto the F750? 
Uh, yes, same as the Kensington Pride one. So we, we have R2E2 in that uh, master model. We could pull those out separately and have a, a, a cultivar specific model. That's, that's doable. Yep. So, yes, um, it is included in the current model, but it also can be pulled out and used as a cultivar specific. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. Um, Michael is asking, can multiple 750 mango meters feed data into a single fruit map? Yes. Um, in your account, you can register multiple instruments and these instruments will upload that data into a single account on fruit maps. Superjit is asking, can it work in high temperature more than 48 degrees? Mango production time in India is in summer and India max temperature sometimes crosses 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm gonna ask Brian, our lead engineer to answer this one. Yeah, Eric, I'd say that the device itself is capable of operating at those temperatures. Uh, when we build the models, we typically uh, build using a variety of temperatures, at least three, a low, medium, and high. And uh, 118, maybe a little bit uh, Fahrenheit Celsius conversion, maybe a little bit high, but uh, I would anticipate the readings to be uh, very accurate. If they're not, uh, it's potential that they might want to apply a small bias correction but uh, I'm not familiar with uh, temperatures in Australia. Maybe Kerry could speak to what the uh, highest temperatures he's experienced there are. Yeah, unfortunately, the mango harvest season is the, the height of summer and the, the tropical north Darwin is, is up into the 40s, certainly. Um, but neither man nor beast nor instrument likes to be out at 50 degrees <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, yeah typically you, you're working you know on the um yeah you try to avoid the heat of the day i suppose the instrument itself i think is is, is as capable more capable than the actual human uh, in those the, the heat of that day so yeah the, the, the farms will send their crews out in the early morning and the late afternoon in preference to the heat of the day thank you dr walsh and Thank you again, Brian. Uh, Lawrence is asking, can the R2E2 model data from the F750 be loaded onto the F751? Um, we'll have to get back to you on this one. Uh, I think it would work better on the F750. This is 751. I think theoretically it can be, but I would have to, we would have to talk to the engineering staff for this. Uh, Cheng Yuan is asking, is it possible to upload data directly from device with Wi-Fi mobile network? Uh, for data on fruit maps, is there API allowing third party apps to extract and use the data? Um, Brian, would you like to talk about extracting and using the data from fruit maps? But speaking about the Is that muted there? Yeah, uh, I can hear you now. Okay, my apologies. So the device uploads directly uh, to Wi-Fi. On the device, as many other devices, you have a list of the Wi-Fi networks. You simply select the network you'd like to use and then upload to Fruit Maps. On Fruit Maps, you already will have registered the serial number for that particular 751. And so magically, the data will automatically appear on Fruit Maps under your account. Uh, if you'd like to uh, download the data from Fruit Maps, uh, I believe that the data is available through a, um, a RESTful API. 
Um, I'm not sure that we actually have the documentation completely flushed out in public at this point, but I know on the back end that the engineering work was done to present that data. So if you're interested in that, uh, let us know and we'll find out about availability and timing. Thanks, Ryan. Um, I hope that answers that question. And with that, uh, we conclude the webinar for the F751 Mango Quality Meter. Thank you, everyone.